Well, happy Monday, everybody. It's April 11th. Hope you had a great weekend. This coming Friday is Good Friday, and I want to encourage you. Be part of our Good Friday services. At our Sault Ste. Marie campus, they'll be at 6 o'clock. At our Gaylor campus, 7 o'clock. Live church online, also at 7 o'clock. Now, as we prepare our hearts, we're going through Psalm 22. Uh, we already have noted that Psalm 22, the first 18 verses, can be broken down in the spiritual suffering of Christ, the personal suffering, and the physical suffering. We started looking at the spiritual suffering. Yeah, uh, actually, it was last week, last Friday, when we said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, today, we're going to see, along with that inquiry, there's an isolation in verse 2. And here's what the psalmist said, again, prophetic of the crucifixion of Jesus. Oh my God, I cry by day, you do not answer. And by night, but I have no rest. His prayers, though fervent, go unanswered. And perhaps this is prophetic of his prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he said, if there's any way to take this cup from me, but, but God didn't do that. And, and Jesus was okay with that because he said, not my will, but yours be done. His reference to his crying out day and night could be a reference to the night in the garden and then the day of the crucifixion. It could be a reference to the darkness that covered the earth during his crucifixion. But there's an isolation he feels because he carries our sin. And then you see an intentionality involved. Look as I read, listen, verse 3. Yet, even though you haven't responded, even though I feel abandoned, yet you are holy. O oh God, you who are enthroned upon the praise in Israel, in you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were delivered, and you they trusted and were not disappointed. I love this. Even in the midst of feeling rejected and isolated because he carried our sin, he acknowledges God is still holy. He never makes a mistake. And God can be trusted even when we go through trials. Oh, what a lesson we need to learn. Folks, listen, no matter what trial you go through, God is still holy. No matter what trial you go through, God can still be trusted. Unanswered prayer cannot be traced back to the unfaithfulness of God. That's not why there's unanswered prayer. The outcry of Jesus in his passion did not go unheard. God was there. Now, beginning in verse 6, we begin to see the personal suffering of Jesus. And he uses the analogy of a worm in verse 6. He says, but I am a worm and not a man, a reproach of men and despised by the people. He calls himself a worm rather than a man. Now, what's the physical analogy here? Well, a worm is an object of weakness and scorn. You're never going to see a football team called the worms, right? And, and, and that's not a picture of a team mascot. They're the object of scorn. On the cross, Isaiah 53.3 teaches, Jesus was despised and forsaken by men. He was viewed like a worm. But there's also a spiritual analogy. You see, the word referred to a worm that produced a scarlet color used as dye. And the only way to get that scarlet color, that dye, out of the worm was to crush it. It was this dye that we used in the tabernacle to create the color for the coverings. What is it teaching us? That like that worm, Jesus would be crushed so that his blood could cover our sins. I hope you'll be part of Good Friday services here at E-Free Church. Father, I thank you that Jesus, you were willing to become a worm despised and rejected by man and crushed to give your blood for our forgiveness. We are so thankful. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have a good day. We'll see you tomorrow morning for another morning check-in.